Hello everyone, you're watching Data Science Crash Course and this is episode number 5 and we're talking about getting data because data is crucial to data science so yeah, how do you get data in order to experiment with it? So depending on what kind of data you want to get uh, there are different sources for that. I'll be talking mostly about uh, numerical and text data. I'm not talking images at all. Uh, this the, because those this is to totally different. We're talking about pure data science, crunching numbers, and doing fun things with numbers. So there are a couple of standard sources where you can find data and great data and download that from. Uh, so first of all, if you're into uh, books and you want to download the whole books, the best source for that is Project Gutenberg, uh, where you have really thousands of thousands of thousands of books. You can download all the older books basically for free uh, as a text file, as an HTML, uh, and you can do anything on them. So that's really great to start with. Then the second source is of course different financial websites because if you want to do analyze more numeric data then a great thing is to uh, get financial data and then different reports about uh, for example how the crops changed from year to year in a given country, uh, in a given state. Uh, that's also a great thing to learn. There are different statistics which are mostly released by governments and you can either search for them on the internet, download them as tables. Sometimes you have to buy them if that's more specific detailed data, uh, but there's plenty of free resources on the web uh, with different tables, with different data. And it's fun to play with those because then you can start interpret uh, interpreting those data for you yourself and see what's true and what's not uh, then another thing is social media so particularly twitter twitter has great api where you can connect to it uh, download some of the data for some you will have to pay uh, for some not uh, they have great developer accounts where you can also try to run a bot in python to collect the data for you for example following a single hashtag and downloading tweets about the single hashtag this is a great data to then uh, try to analyze that uh, related to sentiments related to how people use different language uh, while talking about a particular event it's really great and then the final source, which is uh, commonly used, is Kaggle. Uh, so Kaggle.com, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. Uh, that's a resource for data scientists, the place to go, because uh, there are many different competitions related to data science and machine learning on that platform. Uh, so not, not, it, it's a great thing to, to learn because you have all these different data sets related to different competitions. You don't have to take part in them in order to have the data. Uh, the data is free uh, for you to download and there's absolutely everything from, for example, like uh, recommendations of different uh, what people are buying to what people are watching online to, for example, how different golfers are playing through all the tournaments. Uh, it's already mostly it's cleaned. It's a nice data that you can download and play around with. And literally there are already hundreds and hundreds of data sets that you can use. So this is really a place to go. Some of this data is more complicated, uh, some not. Uh, there's plenty to see uh, and definitely that, that should be your source to go for good data sources. Um, and of course, at the end, you have the whole web. Uh, which you can scrape, which you can uh, download. Uh, so whatever website you follow, uh, you can try scraping those. Also as a platform, I, for example, Isle of Medium, the publishing platform, they have really great uh, articles. Uh, I'm a member and I recommend that. Uh, but actually you can download many articles on Medium in order to scrape that for information. To see, for example, how many articles the, the are, there are for artificial intelligence, for machine learning, for data science, and try to extract the information from that. Uh, yeah, so those are, those are all the sources that you can use. It's really great because once you try, like, once you get into this mindset of looking for data, you will see plenty of sources out there where you can uh, basically get some data and use it for your own experiments at home. And yeah. That's it for this episode. Good luck with getting your data and we'll talk what you can do with this data in the next couple of episodes. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.